Now, folks, when Disney acquired the rights to Marvel, Marvel a couple years ago, some people looked at it as a positive change and with, you know thought did things could be good, especially with the way the the contract, the deal was structured. You know, basically Disney owns the Marvel name, but Marvel is still free to do whatever they need to do. Still free to write the comics the way they want to write them. Uh, deal, make, you know, they're still free to make deals with movie deals with other studios to distribute the movies. Of course, it's got to be in association with Disney. You know, like, like the Avengers and Iron Man. Um, being released by Paramount, but yet it's distributed by Paramount, but it's in association with Disney. It's a Disney product distributed by Paramount. Same with Columbia, uh, doing Spider-Man and stuff like that. In 20th Century Fox doing the X-Men movies. But one of the things that I kind of looked at lately, um, when Disney took over acquisition of the Marvel product, in my opinion, I know I'm not the only one, is how they would present them with their shows. Now Disney has had some decent Marvel cartoon shows debut on Disney XD over the past few years. Uh, Avengers Assemble is pretty good. Uh, from what I understand, Ultimate Spider-Man, which is still going, um, seems to be doing pretty well. And then, of course, you have uh, another one, which is Hulk and the Agents of Smash. And now also you have the live-action uh, series um, on ABC, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Or something like that. The S.H.I.E.L.D. series, basically. And... All of it, all these shows, with the exception of maybe a Agents of Smash, Hulk and the Agents of Smash, have been getting positive reviews. Now, Hulk and the Agents of Smash haven't been getting positive reviews. They've kind of gotten a mixed review, and I can kind of see why. The way they kind of go from scene to scene, you know, the way they do that, it's kind of gets annoying, you know. I mean, I understand they're trying to put emphasis on it being an action-related show. So, I can understand that. So, I can understand that might be an annoyance. But, the one thing, though, that I don't like that Marvel did, and I don't know if Disney had any influence on this or not, or if it was Marvel themselves, but one of the, show, one of the episodes that came out a week ago kind of got a reaction of, meh, it was alright, but me wasn't that good. Some liked it, some didn't. And of course I'm talking about the Hulk, Agents of Smash episode, Venom Inside. And when I saw this, and then I saw some of the pictures when I went to some of the Wicca sites, or Wicca, Wicca sites, uh, Marvel Wicca sites, whether it's the animated or the comic book or whatever, or even Disney. When I saw the when I saw all these images of the recent shows with Venom in there, the first thing that went through my mind is, "Are you serious? Are you totally serious?" I mean, first of all, any if there's anybody out there that's a fan of Spider-Man and knows about the history of Venom. I mean, this is even touched upon in the original Spider-Man trilogy in the third film, if you will. Venom... Now, we all know he's like a living... He's basically a symbiote, a living space goo, if you will. But never once... Never once has Venom... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe someone could correct me on this. But never once has Venom, in my opinion, from what I have seen and from what I have read, 
never once was Vim, Venom ever Venom never once was Venom ever able ever able to absorb people into them and use them as some kind of energy core never once never once did he ever absorb somebody and yet I'm watching clips and pieces of Venom inside and and I'm looking at this and I'm saying are you serious you have basically made Venom into a character into basically a blob character that absorbs people I mean heck the, the, the ending of the episode not to give much away basically has him absorbing all the agents of Smash with the exception of Hulk. All at once he absorbs She-Hulk, Red Hulk, and the two other guys. And it's like, are you serious? Venom never did that. The origin of Venom was he came from space, he bonded with Peter, became Peter's black... And Bonded, he kind of bonded with Peter at first, became his new black Spider-Man suit. Tried to feed off any anger that Peter would have, or whatever. Basically changed Peter's attitude at times to something that Peter didn't like. But like I said, kind of changed it to the point that eventually he was going to try to feed off the anger and become who he is and become who he became when he bonded with Eddie Brock. And never once, never once, throughout all that, comic books, movies, the animated series, never once did Venom ever, and I mean ever, be showcased or appear as just a blob that could absorb people and use them as an energy core. Heck, you want a character, that, you want a villain that's going to, an anti-hero villain, if you will, that's going to absorb people and use them as an energy core, go tune in to Dra Dragon Ball Z. You got a character there named Cell that uh, essentially absorbs people like Android 18 and Android 17 and uses them as energy in the body, basically uses them as energy in his body to make him stronger and more enhanced and more powerful. And that's what they were doing here with the Venom Inside episode with Venom, but it's like, that's not Venom. That's not Carnage. That's not Venom. And, you, and you're probably saying to yourself, well, how do you know that, Brian? Well, there's a scene after Spider-Man starts seeing that Venom is weakened by sonic sounds, by sonic vibrations. There's a scene when, after Venom absorbs She-Hulk, you have She-Hulk trying to pop, you see She-Hulk popping her head out, trying to get out, and yet Venom is, Venom is basically closing her back inside, sealing her back in, and basically you have Venom sealing her back inside. I mean, she's popping her head out, trying to climb out, and yet Venom is sealing her back inside. And it shows you that basically he's using her as an energy core. And if you want any more evidence, what about the blue guy that gets absorbed? Can't think of his name right now. But he gets he gets absorbed, and it shows you right inside it, when he's in his ball form that he's being connected, that all the venom is connected to him, is connected all over him. You can still see him, but it's like he's just being connected in there, like an energy core. And that Venom's just taking the sh his shape and all that because he's ciphering off energy. He's basically holding them inside like there's some kind of energy core. And to me, like I said, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe someone watching this can correct me. But never once do I ever remember Venom. Never once, folks, do I remember Venom ever being portrayed as just a shapeless blob that absorbs people. And never once do I ever remember him being a shapeless blob with a, with his venom face. And again, maybe I'm wrong, but I've never, never really recalled that. And if that's a Disney move, now 
And if that's Disney, and if that's a move by Disney now that they own Marvel, Disney, what are you thinking? I mean, I can understand maybe you feel that makes it more entertaining and stuff, and makes it more dramatic and action-packed and unexpected. But seriously, if you're going to own the Marvel name, you got to stay true to what makes Marvel what it is. I mean, there are exceptions in comic books and all that, that things change and people accept it, people don't accept it. Take a look at the current Sonic series right now by Archie Comics. That's a good example. But my point is, my point is, you know, you don't take something like, you don't take an iconic anti-hero villain like Venom and do what you did with him here. Now, I do understand that they might be going back to the roots of Venom next season, or in the upcoming season of Ultimate Spider-Man, by having Eddie Brock be Agent Venom, kind of working with S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, that could work. Now, that that's trying to get Venom back to its, his roots, then, then fine, that's cool with me. But still, but still, the way it's portrayed here... Again, maybe I'm wrong, maybe my comic book history is a little off, but as far as I remember, Venom was never like that. Venom was just a symbiont that bonded with whoever they bonded with. As if they were a living suit of armor, which they essentially were, which essentially Venom was. So, you know, that's just my take on it. You know... Let me know what you guys think about it. Do you guys feel the same way I do about this? Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, check it up here on YouTube. They, somebody did post some clips, maybe the episode here on the YT, but check it out. And uh, that's all I'm going to say. Comment below, and God bless.